Oh, hi. Hey, what's up? Uh, it's me, Colin, CISSP, questions of the day, IT Dojo, all that jazz. Thank you for being here. Two more questions to help you prep for the exam coming at you right now. All right, or which of the following is a characteristic of a star topology? And when I say star topology, I mean you've got like mesh topologies, bus topology, star topology. So in that context, which of these fits with a star topology? All right, first answer choice says the star topologies are collision free. Uh, that is just straight up no, negative, untrue. So uh, that's not what we're looking for. Next item on our list says it is resistant to multiple node failures. This is a true statement. One of the single biggest advantages of a star topology is that every single node has its own connection point into the aggregator, which could be a hub or a switch or something like that, be it physical or in some cases logical, but more often than not physical. Um, so the benefit of this is that if everybody has their own individual pathway into the network and something bad happens to that physical connection, the only device that's kicked out is that device. If you contrast that with older school bus topologies where everybody's connected to a shared bus and something bad happens to the bus, then everybody's disconnected. So that's very much an answer choice that's correct here. And I believe that's the only answer choice that's correct, but let's keep looking at the other ones just to be sure. Third choice says that you can only use the star topology with copper cabling. No, that's just some junk I made up just trying to confuse you if you weren't entirely sure. So negative. And then the last answer choice here is that they have limited dependence upon an aggregating device. That's unfortunately not true. Um, if you are using a star topology, there's typically some sort of device to which all of the individual spokes on the star are connecting. And should for some reason that device become unavailable, then yeah, you've got a problem because then all the nodes are gonna be disconnected. I mean, the simplest of all examples is think about an ethernet switch. If you've got 20 computers all plugged into an ethernet switch and the switch fails, well, all 20 computers are now not able to communicate with each other. So there is quite a bit of reliance on that. Now we could get into redundancy discussions and do all that other kind of stuff, but not right now. Okay, question number two today is, which of the following, it feels like I've done something similar to this before. I should probably go review my old questions. Which of the following is not likely to be found in a DMZ? So there's some answer choices right there. What I wanna know is which of them is the least likely uh, to be found in a DMZ area. Click on pause if you need to, think about it, then click play, talk it through. All right, looking at the answer choices here, front end SMTP relay, all day long we find these guys in the DMZ area. So email comes from the internet into the SMTP relay. The SMTP relay does whatever to it, typically looking for you know spam, looking for viruses, looking for any other kind of junk that's inappropriate, bad words, people selling Viagra, whatever it is. Uh, filter that stuff out, and then after it's passed those filters, then it's forwarded to an internal server where it can be queued up for delivery. Um, Next item on the list says DNS. Uh, absolutely. Um, not everybody, don't get me wrong, but heck, not everybody has a front-end mail server. Not everybody has a DMZ. But if you do have a DMZ and you are hosting your own DNS, then putting a DNS server into the DMZ is a very common thing to do. And the purpose of that DNS server is to resolve stuff for people on the internet for your domain or domains, plural. So when you want to resolve www.itdojo.com, if you were IT Dojo, you would have a DNS server in your DMZ that can handle that resolution. Now, very common these days, particularly for smaller organizations, to simply have somebody else host their DNS. I get that. Heck, most of us these days are not even dealing with hosting our own email anymore either. But we're thinking larger enterprise here. Third option on the list says a web server. Uh, absolutely, if you are hosting your own website, that you intend to be publicly available and you choose to do this yourself, the place where you are going to put that web server is in your DMZ and that protected portion of your network that is accessible from the internet yet still protected by a firewall, which is sort of the hallmark of what DMZs offer. Next batter on the list says an FTP server. Sure. If you have an FTP server that you want to make available to the internet so that people can upload and download things via FTP to you, then a DMZ is a great place to put that. The answer choice that we're looking for, the one that you're not typically going to find in a DMZ, and I'm not saying never, but I'm saying driving hard and fast to the hoop towards never, 
is an Active Directory domain controller. Uh, we don't typically put domain controllers in our DMZ because uh, there's no need. Active Directory is all about your internal organization and being able to resolve resources and find resources and authenticate and do all these other kinds of wonderful magical things. And uh, we don't need that stuff in the actual DMZ itself. So it's perfectly plausible that something in the DMZ might want to talk to Active Directory, but it's usually going to talk through another internal firewall in order to go in and do that. We're not typically going to go place a domain controller in the actual DMZ itself. So, so I'm sure at some point somebody down below will give me a comment on the fact that they've done that or whatever, and that's fine, good for you. But in general, we are not going to find domain controllers in a DMZ. Sweet, we got them done. Two more questions down. First question sort of kicks it old school and make sure that you understand the difference between star topologies, bus topologies, and say a, a, a mesh topology. So those are important concepts. We see them evolving all the time um, in terms of their physical implementations. And uh, the second question was making sure that you feel good about the types of services that you're going to find in a DMZ. So I hope you dug those questions. hope they help you as you continue your prep. And I'll see you again real soon with some more questions. Peace.